Good morning and welcome to the first FSR webinar entitled A Target Model for the Internal Gas Market that will be presented by the Director of Florence Corps of Regulation, Professor Jean-Michel Glachon. My name is Magdalena Moss and I'm a training coordinator and the webinar moderator here at Florence Corps of Regulation. And before we will proceed with the presentation of Jean-Michel Glachon, I would like to point out just a couple of issues uh, regarding the webinar agenda. The first point is the introduction, so this is exactly what I'm doing right now. In this point, I will also explain briefly the control panel of the webinar software that you can see right now on your computer screen. Then we will connect with Jean-Michel to proceed with his presentation. Then we will start the Q&A section. In this section, uh, Jean-Michel will answer for the questions submitted by you, and I will briefly explain how to submit your question during the webinar in just a couple of seconds. Then I will conclude this webinar with just final announcements. Okay, so this is the control panel that you can see right now in your upper right corner of your computer screen. So um, there is tiny little orange arrow on this control panel. So this is the place where you can close or open this panel. So during the webinar, if you would like to have your, the presentation on your full screen, just click on this button and you will be able to, to minimize the control panel. And then uh, when we'll ask you to use a couple of tools during the, during the webinar, just please click on this arrow and the control panel will reopen. Then, uh, just below this arrow, you can see a button that means to minimize the window. It means that you can minimize the webinar. So if you would like to check something on your uh, on the internet, you would like to check your, your email, or maybe you would like to uh, write some documents, there is no problem. You can minimize the whole webinar. It means that you will be still connected to the webinar, but in the same time, uh, you can still do other things. However, I strongly encourage you to, to switch on, uh, switch off all the programs that you have right now on your computer because this can interfere with the internet connection. Then below that, you have the hand rise tool. This is the tool that I would like you to, to use just right now. So if you can hear me and if you can see the presentation on your computer screen right now, please click on the hand rise tool right now and I will know that from the technical point of view everything is okay. So you, uh, I can see that you are doing this right now. Okay, I will just give you a couple of seconds to do that. However, if you have any problems with, uh, from technical point of view, please use the question box that you can see just below. This is the place where you can submit any questions, any suggestions during the webinar, and this is also a place where you can submit questions to Jean-Michel Guachon, and he will reply for your questions during the Q&A section. So uh, remember that we have a very limited time for the Q&A, therefore, uh, please submit your questions as soon as possible. And then you will be sure that uh, Professor Glachon will reply for your question. Okay. So right now it's the time to, to connect with uh, Jean-Michel right now. So let's see whether he can hear me. Jean-Michel, can you hear me? Hello, Magda. Have you seen the wonderful spring on the hills <laughs> surrounding Florence? Should, yeah. should we postpone the webinar with foggy day or a rainy day <laughs> or this winter? I wish, I wish. Well, we have to ask our participants whether they would like to do that. <laughs> Maybe we can write a poll on that the next time. <laughs> next time we will do. Next time we will do okay. that. Okay, I can see the, your presentation on my computer screen, so it means that everything is okay. I hope that also our participants can see that. Um, so, well, right now I will mute myself, and Jean-Michel, I will connect with you again in around 40 minutes. Good luck. Thank you, Magda. Ladies and gentlemen, very good morning. Welcome to the Front School for our very first webinar dedicated to the European target model or European gas target model. In fact, this webinar should never have been conceived because 17 months ago when Walter Bott, the Vice President of CER, did phone me, I didn't catch anything. Walter was seeing Jean-Michel model the target, target the model. What was the meaning? I didn't grasp anything, so I should have said no, but first I was ashamed 
of not understanding what what they were saying. Second, I was fearing to have to tell why. <laughs> I, I, I would like to refuse the proposal. Then, to get some peace, uh, as being very feeble, I did say yes. Bingo! Lucky strike. This target model is one of the 10 or 12 most exciting things I did do in my life of researcher. But target what, model what, let's look at it. That's a picture. It is usually said that a picture helps to understand, but is it the picture of the target or a picture of the model? And, and why a picture and not words, not maths, not figures? Because it is a vision. The target model is only a vision. On the top, it is a non-binding vision. It is a vision of the European internal market in, let's say, 2015, tomorrow. 2020, after tomorrow, I'm already preparing my 70th anniversary. And now you understand why Walter did for me, to get a vision, a non-binding vision, something tying a body on Earth, except maybe the author, a professor, a French professor with spectacles should be good at delivering vision. I can also deliver dreams on request. You will find the application form at the end of the webinar. Why a vision? To give consistency to what? To issues addressed in ESSER, the European Agency, Framework Guidelines, and ETSOG, the European body of TSOs, grid codes. By the way, why do we need a vision? Why we already have a third package? Do you think that the third package deals with this issue? Does it deal a lot? Does it deal a bit? Does it deal not that much? Does it deal not at all? You can choose, you can express your vision. You are not tied by my vision. Give yours. Already 40% of you decided, 50, good, 60, quite quick, 30 seconds, 70, you are good. I should applaud you. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. 40 seconds, 80%. One minute, 85. Anyway, in a democracy, it, it's never possible to get more than 85. Only North Korea can deliver 150 participants. Now you are going to see the results. You can see for 13% a lot, 55 a bit, so two-thirds of you think that the third package did deal with the issue. 20%, not that much, 12%, not at all, so two-thirds yes, one-third no. You will get my own vision, which is non-binding. I'm sorry, the third package does not. The third package is not giving a vision of the market. We do not have a sketch of the market design. We only know a few things, but, but the coherence is not given. It is so, while a bit surprising for us Europeans, because to reach an agreement at the European level among 27 member states governments, plus the European Parliament, plus the European Commission, is not always possible, and frequently we leave corpses under the carpet to get the agreement at the European level. However, the third package did something extremely important. The third package gives the starting point. The starting point of the European internal market is the use of entry-exit zones. We have zones where gas flows freely. 
entry exit zone. We have zones where gas has a single wholesale price. It's not that trivial. If you were Americans, you should immediately see that the European market is not at all the same market like the American one, where you do not have any entry exit zones and you do not have any pricing zones. That's the way we Europeans did enter into our gas market and this way is a regulated basis. The, the basic functions of our gas markets is regulated as pricing zone and free exit zones. That choice implies that a number of regulatory questions must be answered in order to conceive the framework guidelines, a third part of the job, or to implement the grid cause, the NSOG part. <clears throat> we, in Florence, at the Florence School, we propose, I propose, the MECOS target model. MECOS stands for market enabling, market connecting, what for? For secure supply. The vision of my model, three pillars plus common foundations. Pillar one, to enable functioning wholesale markets. The key word is functioning. We don't want only to get markets, we want functioning ones. Pillar two, to tightly connect these markets. Of course, we don't want to have national only or regional only markets. We want to get it European, European wide. So we need to tightly connect them. Pillar three, to enable secure supply patterns. Of course, most of the gas we use is coming from abroad, from foreign country foreign countries, we would like to see the gas entering the Union and we would like to see the gas flowing inside the Union. For these three pillars, common foundations, to improve the market effectiveness, pillar one, pillar two, pillar three, we need to realize economic pipeline investments. We need to have enough or well-designed enough infrastructure at the European level and the country level. Plus, we need economic investments. We do not need an economic investment. We cannot afford it, by the way, in the financial crisis we are in for a while. SSR MECOS, SSR target model, aims at improving cross-border trade, the core of the European market, by the way, and it proposes answers to several questions posed by European markets integration, like short-term question, enabling functioning market within and across national borders, how to make it, long-term, to connect these markets through contracts, through grid capacity reservation, security of supply to permit long-term contracting, Long-term contracting is not anti-competition, is not anti-economic efficiency. There is good and bad long-term contracting, as there is good and bad short-term contract. Plus, we need pushing some investments, defined either as national priority or European priority. We need European priority investments, too, not only national. I'm sorry, Mr. Sarkozy, Europe still exists. Plus, we need easy short-term flows of gas. I remember, I would like to remember you that in the big cold civil war, Ukraine, Russia, some countries did lack of gas inside European Union, but European Union as a whole had enough gas. But the gas, let's say, in Spain was not flowing to Hungary or Bulgaria. So security of supply can be strongly dependent of short-term flows, not only of long-term things. Let's look at the pillar one, to enable functioning wholesale markets. Functioning wholesale markets for what? First, to foster supply competition. I would like to see, and I hope most of you too, 
we would like to see Russian gas, Algerian gas, Norwegian gas, British gas, Qatari gas, and tomorrow, why not American shale gas, Indian shale gas, or Polish shale gas being offered to anyone willing to source here or there. Second, we need functioning wholesale markets to efficiently use our gas assets. The gas industry is an heavy industry with enormous investments, enormous amount of capital, and we cannot afford not using our assets efficiently. Our assets are procurement contracts, storage facilities, LNG terminal, gas pipes. All of this should be used in an economic order, in an efficient order. By the way, new poll, what is a sufficient size for a functioning market? Does it matter? Is it the size of the network because gas flows only in pipes or similar tankers? Is it a minimum volume? If, you, if we trade less gas, the market won't function. Is it the frequency of trade? If we trade gas only once every 15 years, it, it, work, it will work less than every 10 minutes. It is a number of gas sources. If I have only Russian gas, my market won't function. If I have more, it could work. Take your decision. Already 60% did choose. Seventy-five, quite good. You are accelerating the rhythm. Already ninety percent in less than one minute. Good, good, good. The next webinar we will we will ask the people attending to do the show, and I will only watch at you. The poll is closed. We are getting. 60% maximum volume and number of gas sources, and 40% size of the network and frequency of trade. You already know that my own vision is not binding, and we will look the way I do see it. MECOS creates structural conditions for functioning markets by arranging entry-exit pricing zones being being first large enough to be interesting for a substantial number of full sellers. I'm proposing 20 billion cubic meter. In the Western Europe, most of us, we have it. In the Central and Eastern Europe, it's more difficult to reach if you do not unite or merge countries. Plus, well connected to other markets and supply sources, if you only have the Norwegian gas, where competition can come from, if you only have Algerian gas, etc. And in my mind, three different gas sources could be good on the top of a minimum volume to have a functioning pricing zone. I would like to remind you that in Europe, all markets are regulated. All markets are entry-exit zones having being designed. You do not have any spontaneous entry exit zones in Europe. As long as we design the zones, I would like to get it large enough and well connected enough. Second part of the first pillar, the architectures. I did give just a minute ago structural conditions. Now I would like to look at the architectures. Sometimes also, sometimes, we also say designs instead of architecture. First, market areas. The wording market area 
has never been conceived for my own use. You may call market area what you want. In my mind, market area is used to designate a complete market fusion. We have a single entry exit pricing zone plus a single balancing zone from import points to end users. It can be a national zone if functioning wholesale markets can be achieved standalone. It can be a cross-border zone, a zone merging countries if cross-border cooperation is required to achieve functional wholesale markets of minimum size and minimum diversity of sources. If it is so, if it is cross-border, TSOs have to deeply cooperate because TSOs will manage a single balancing zone. Therefore, the allocation of costs and benefits among TSOs will have to be tightly managed. We know that it is demanding, but we also want to get unified markets, so we have to be demanding. If we are less demanding, we can use trading regions against, uh, sorry, again, the wording trading region is not mine. You may use it to say something else. When I use trading region, I want to say Let's put the balancing apart. So we will get a single cross-border price zone, a single entry exit zone for the wholesale market. Therefore, we will get a congestion-free interconnection there for the pricing. But balancing zones will be left to several national end user zones. It is less demanding for TSOs or for DSOs. That's why I was thinking about this trading region. Now, second pillar, enhance trading condition. We do not want only to have structural markets. We also want to get markets where traders can trade. Enhance trading conditions, ETC, can also be seen as, if you know the modern economics, to economize transaction costs there are measures to be implemented foremost in the NSOG grid codes. What do we mean by economizing transaction costs? If I have in Europe 30 or 40 pricing zones and let's say 40 or 45 balancing zones, with each its own rules to trade at the European level, it is a mess, it is a nightmare. Everything is changing at each border. I, I do not pretend that it is better to drive the car on the left or on the right side of the road, but we have to choose only one. I'm sorry for UK. And if on the continent we drive on the right, let's drive on the right everywhere. That's the purpose of an unstranding condition. We want to harmonize it, not to dictate but to facilitate trade. First example, capacity allocation mechanism. To whom do you give the right to use the pipe or the facilities? Second, congestion management procedure. What do you do when, when there is not enough capacity? How do you solve it? Is it differently from one zone to the other or with the same principles? Second, nomination and balancing. Nomination. You did book the capacity. How do you activate your right to the transportation? Balancing, we have seen already. Yeah? If we have a discrepancy between injection and withdrawal in the portfolio of a shipper, who is taking care, who is responsible for? We know that the TSO will be responsible. But then how it will financially impact the, the trade of the shipper? Tariffs, because inevitably we will pay, and we will like not to see tariffs designed to impede trade. Gas quality, because as you know already, 
we have different quality of gas and sometimes it is making trade difficult. This second pillar will continue with methods to connecting markets. I did say markets and not market because gas is traded on several different markets, 15 year long, a really long term, one year long, let's call it mid term, one month long, short term. It's easy to understand that due to the different date of delivery, we have different markets and of course we will get different prices and different contracts. For all of this, 15 years to one month, trading across all European markets should be facilitated by the enhanced trading conditions, the harmonization we have just seen, harmonization which is today uh, conceived by the duo Acer and Edsog. 24 hours, very short term, day ahead market. In my mind, we need something else than the enhanced trading condition. You get it in red, day ahead market coupling. If you are familiar with the wording market coupling, you immediately catch. If you are not, do not be afraid. We couple things, market coupling, we couple. What do we couple? The commodity, the gas, the transportation capacity, the pipe. And we tell you, if you are able to sell your gas, the commodity, you will get the transportation. Very good. Much simpler to trade. That's what I'm proposing for the day ahead. We also have a shorter, very short this time, intraday market. For the intraday market, I have been conservative and I did ask only for enhanced trading conditions. I'm very pleased today to see that at least one European regulator, not the smallest, the UK one, did tell, at least in one meeting, that the market coupling should be complemented by intraday market coupling because UK is, say, is, is showing intraday prices not aligned enough with the continent. Bravo, Avjami. Good. After these two pillars, the third one, because we want secure supply. We know that Europeans are, are giving an enormous value to the word secure, security. First, to get secure supply, I think that we need to get crossing markets product. If I want to cross three countries, I should be able to buy it in a single shot. It is called the link chain product. It will avoid for me to get the first country and the third and not the second, which, is, which will impede trade across countries. These link chain products should be auctioned and then they will allow the sale of capacity in combined border points. Of course, these products may have different durations because we have different markets, long term, 15 years, to short term, one month. To this, I add something else. For security of supply, TSOs may buy capacity in adjacent systems. It is called fallback contracts. A TSO in the country A pays for capacity in the country B. Welcome. It solves the famous issue of costs and beneficiaries. If the beneficiary pays in another country where are borne the costs, everything will work better. Obvious. But, <laughs> I'm sorry, it is obvious, but but it's not implemented yet while we, we have already more than 15 years of opening of the gas markets. Come on. Foundations. We need economic pipeline investments that necessary foundation of 
for all the already seen pillars. First, we need investment between markets, between zones. Therefore, we need interconnections. We all agree in the academia and around, academia and consultancy, let's say, that we can get it through open seasons, which is a market-based or half market-based tool. The TSO comes and says, for three months, for six months, I open a season of booking. I would like to expand my grid in this way, that way. You can answer and book. On the top, we should add a preset evaluation criterion. For example, if 85% of the capacity is booked, I will do it 100%. In my mind, and I am not backed by all my friends, as you will see, in my mind, the regulatory authority could add more capacity for security of supply. It's perfectly normal that for market players investing for occurrence of one each 20 years, one each 40 years does not make sense, but it could make sense for a regulatory authority in the name of the population. Second, regulatory authority could also add capacity for openness of the market. Regulatory authority could say, okay, you are booking uh, 15 years long term. Okay, good, but I would like to add 4% more for short term trade, for short term competition. I do not see why it should be a crime, as I have heard many times. Second, we should invest within markets, <coughs> inside the pricing zone. There, it is simpler because this investment could be evaluated against congestion costs, why I do agree sometimes we are unable to calculate correctly them. That's another story. We have three pillars plus foundations. What are the benefits? Question to your poll. What may happen once a MECOS model like is implemented in 2015, in 2020? First, the Russian gas will be sold everywhere in the EU at USA price? Question mark. Second, more conservative. Prices across wholesale markets will be aligned as much as possible, even pretty conservative. Third, all European end users will be linked to a functioning wholesale market. Uh -huh. Four, all European end users will be connected to the same European wholesale market, more progressive. To the poll, make your choice, express yourself. Half of you already did do in 20 seconds. You are very, very good. You are good kids. I am unfortunately your grandfather. I would prefer the reverse, but biology denies it. 80% voted in 40 seconds. Remarkable. One minute, 85, and of course, to get North Korea, it's more difficult. But the Pareto law, you get 85% and the last 15 are extremely demanding, extremely costly. Perfection is costly. That's why I'm not perfect, by the way. Then, the results, you can see them, 3%, 3% <laughs> think we will get Russian gas at the USA price, which means that the European market won't be that good, because Russian gas is two times and a half more expensive than in the US. 
by the way, gas is a commodity, so two times and half more makes a lot. Half of you think we will do what we can with prices as much as possible, pretty conservative. Third, roughly half of you think that a European end user will be linked to a functioning resale market and only 16% are demanding we will get the same in the EU. Your vision is not binding, let's see mine. Once a makers model like implemented, beep, 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 first, all European end users will be linked to a functioning wholesale market, but not to the same. We will get several gas wholesale markets in Europe. So my own vision is conservative. Second, prices across the sell market will be aligned, but only as much as possible. We cannot guarantee having a single price, a single hub in Europe. So you can see that my model is conservative. While I've heard frequently that this damn French academic is asking for a dream. I'm asking for a dream, but a feasible dream. What are the key questions to sum up, to sum it up? What are the key questions addressed by any gas target model? Not only mine, but, but of any kind, of any origin. First, short-term condition. Entry exit systems, the typical European market, you remember that the USA do not have entry exit system. The European entry system needs particular mechanisms to bridge the gap between the commercial network used when trading the commodity gas and the physical network used when the real gas actually flows. We have a gap between these two. And we have to bridge the gap, short-term coordination. Long-term coordination. We need to connect zones we do, con we do not connect points, like in the USA, we connect zones. So we connect regulated areas, we connect de design areas. And to connect them, we need mechanism to invest and mechanism to allocate the capacity. Third, security of supply. Improving connection between market has to come with mechanism securing European gas supply, notably favoring the entry of foreign gas, because we are mainly consuming foreign gas, but not only Russian. Russian, Algerian, Qatari, and I hope someday um, American or even Indian or Chinese. In fact, there is many other target models proposed. Four are related there. CIEP, Kligendal, my very dear friend, Jacques de Jong, the founder of the Association of Regulators, CEO, and also the first energy regulator in Netherlands. Frontier Economics, who did work for Gaz de France-Suez, the big uh, Franco-Belgian utility. LECG, another friend, Bos Moselle, who did work for Ofgem. And Yoram, a bit more surprising, it's my own gas advisor, Sergio Oscari. Sergio didn't agree with me, and then did elaborate its own model. That's democracy. We, we, we have visions, and we have several visions. First, for short-term cross-border, short-term capacity allocation. CIEP, Klickendal, Jacques de Jong, Frontier Economics, Gaz de France, Suez, LECG, Ofgem, do not propose any new important change. Euram, Sergio Ascari, my advisor, supports implicit allocation, like me, market coupling, but only for specific cases where the inefficiency of capacity allocation is higher than transaction costs. Long-term cross-border, all models have a consensus in explicit allocation. 
Yoram, said Joascari, is proposing on the top a new mechanism, open subscription procedure. We will see it again in a moment. Investment on cross-border capacity. CIEP, Klingendel, Jacques de Jong, Frontier Economics, Cas de France US, LECG of GEM, propose cross-border investment through bilateral contract and open season, which means market-based investment. Euram is adding long-term contracts through a binding centralized mechanism, open subscription procedure. All the market agents plus the public authorities the regulators, the TSO themselves in a bordering country, or even the government can bid to get capacity in this centralized auction. Security of supply, Klingendal, Gaz de France US, Ofgem, and Sergio rely on long-term contract only, which means for me, or market mechanism only. So they bet that market mechanism, bilateral contract deal, will inevitably deliver security of supply. A bit strange for me, but I respect their vision. There is vision. Everyone has the legitimate right to have its own vision, or is, or her even in English, vision. That's a summary. I won't go through because it's too long. The first line is me, the second line is Kari, the third line Jacques de Jong. You will see that Sergio and me are proposing new tools like NRS Keeper Right to Influence Investment Capacity, that's me, or Implicit Allocation, or Coupling or Merging Markets, Sergio Open Subscription Procedure, a bit of implicit auctions. After that, when you jump to uh, Jacques, Bosmoselle, and, and GDF Suez, you will see mainly merchant procedures, explicit allocation, merchant procedures, explicit allocation, merchant procedures, explicit allocation, with, with some punctual changes. Of Jim did say in a meeting, why not implicit allocation in trade? Or another remark of the of gem document bundle products, use it or lose it. In the uh, GDF Suez, you will see that regarding cross-border contract, GDF Suez doesn't like to have regulatory intervention. So at the European level, crossing the border should be left to the market. But inside the country, at the TSO level, they are OK with the regulation of the TSO decision. Maybe because they are a vertically integrated utility, they like to get a guarantee of revenue. That's it. If you did like the way I'm doing applied economics, have a look on my new journal. There is already 4,000 readers of it. The first issue is for free on Internet. You will see notably Fatih Birol, the chief economist of AIA. You will see the feather of climate change economics, Nicolas Stern. You will see one of the possible uh, Nobel Prize in France, Jean Tirol, but also David Newberry, Daniel Herman, Oim Ardine Friend, Stephen Littlechild. Have a look. Thank you, or I did thank you. Thank you, Jean-Michel. Thank you very much for your presentation. I think that right now we can proceed to the Q&A section. Uh, there were a couple of questions submitted by our audience. I will read those questions to you, and if you could uh, just answer for those questions very briefly, and uh, then I will be able to, to conclude this session. Uh, Jean-Michel, can you hear me? Everything is okay? Yes, yes. Yes, but perfect. I, I would like to enjoy the spring, too, <laughs> Okay. by the window. So so, so let's just get through that. Um, so the first question will be, uh, it's regarding the market coupling. If you can sell, will you, you will get the transportation. Whose transportation? Yeah. yeah, transportation will be given by the TSO because the TSO will, uh, let's say, announce to the market the remaining available capacity 
to be used. Let's say you have to you have to nominate to the TSO. So at a certain point, the TSO knows what is the capacity nominated and knows what is the capacity still available and could put it in the gas exchange market to support sh very short-term gas trade. Okay, uh, the next question has two parts, so I will just read them uh, one after another. Uh, how are you intending to take your proposals forward? What discussions have you had with Acer and Ensoji? Good. I do not have any discussion as being asked to deliver a vision. I did give my vision, and now if it's not a sub, by the way, that's here, but, but we may simplify and saying ESA, but it's not ESA. CER on one side, on the behalf of European Commission, and SOGI on another side, discuss themselves what they want to do, and I am not involved. I, I, I only did deliver a vision, and I did let people discuss it and, and find a compromise or, or, or find any compromise. I'm not leading the discussion. I'm only providing a platform to discuss. Uh, the same person actually has uh, another question that will be connected with the, with your answer right now. Uh, the the yeah. question is, the target model as it stands in EU will not be translated into a specific code. So are you proposing an additional EU code on your proposal? Or, uh, oh, just a second. Uh, or are you hoping your proposal will be addressed in the existing codes currently being developed? Yeah. Three questions, very good. <laughs> this one too. It's only a vision, so I cannot claim anything, and I do not claim anything, but I have hope. And to be frank, I have first the hope that within the existing codes and the existing guidelines, we will do a lot, but I know that things will be more difficult, let's say market coupling. Market coupling in France, it is done between the north and the south, but it is done inside France, so the costs and the benefits are French. Uh, the same in UK regarding Scotland and England. But now market coupling between countries will be more demanding. Will we get yes, no, where? It's open. Anyway, it, it won't come from me. It will come from the existing process of dialogue between ESER and SOGI European Commission. Uh, and the last question will be, what are, in your opinion, the main risk of MECOS implementation? The main, I guess, the main is a mess. The main is, as frequently said by my friend Jacques de Jong, even by Sergio, is that if we push too much to create by, by regulatory decision markets, they won't really work because traders, shippers, buyers, sellers will not necessarily trade where I, I Jean-Michel, would like them to trade. However, we have to push them because, because this reform is open since 15 years. And, and to be frank, more 20 than 50, eh? 15. So we have to push market players, but at a certain point, we have to know that we have to stop pushing them to see if, if the the regulatory environment really permit markets to take off. So this combination of push and freedom is difficult to do, but I would like to remind to anyone in the deepness of my heart that as soon as European Union has decided entry exit zones, pricing zones, the foundations of the market are regulated. You cannot escape it. If you want unregulated markets, go to the US. You will see how they are, how they behave, and you will see that in Europe we do not have. So there is not a single country in Europe where the market 
is absolutely free. All our markets are regulated. So the question is how to regulate them a little bit to get them well Europeanized. Many of my friends, that Jacques de Jong and Sergio, think that the market forces will do, market forces will provide. I am not sure, and I would like to tease a little bit the market forces, and I would like to push them a little bit. But of course, to push them with uh, reason. That's my point. Thank you, Jean-Michel. There is also still one question. We have time also for, for answering very briefly for this one. Um, so how do you envisage the market coupling work? One, ag one agent across Europe executing all market coupling? Oh, no, it's impossible. That's a good question because I did forget to tell. No, we will never get a single gas market in Europe in the, in the demanding way. We cannot organize market coupling at the European level because gas does flow at a certain speed. So we cannot, we cannot assume that gas is so fast and so liquid that any gas injected in Portugal can be got tomorrow in Estonia, Hungary, or Poland. We cannot do it. As we cannot do it, we will inevitably have restricted market coupling between two local markets, but not all over Europe. It's impossible. It's impossible because it would be too costly, not because it, it's absolutely impossible, but the cost of it will be crazy. And if you look at the US, you will see that you have many gas prices. And it's not because you have Henry Hub that California pays the Henry Hub price. You may have a price and Henry Hub, a different one in California. And they have been unable to totally unify the prices. And they do not unify the delivery. In the US, if you inject gas at Henry Hub, you have no gas in California, because Henry Hub is not in California. You still have to go to California. So in Europe, we, we did decide to socialize the network, to socialize the market trading, but we cannot socialize it at the European wide level because it's too big and inefficiency will be several times the benefits. Thank you very much, Jean-Michel, also for this Q&A section, and thank you for, very much once again for your presentation. Now it's the time to say goodbye to you. Uh, so big thank you from me and also from our audience. And, and right now, unfortunately, I will have to also mute you to just to conclude this section. So thank you very much. And uh, thank you to the thank you to you to the more than 100 participants, and thank you to let me free to enjoy the sun drinking cappuccino as a terrace of the bar. Goodbye. Oh, exactly. Goodbye. So uh, right now I can go back to my presentation. So you will see right now uh, the slides that I have prepared just, uh, just to conclude today's session. Um, so just to conclude, I have just final remarks. Automatically on your computer screen, right after we will close this webinar, will appear a survey. This survey is consisted of eight questions, and we strongly encourage you to fill out this questionnaire because it will help us to evaluate this session and also make some improvements in our future webinars. The announcement, the next webinar will take place on 17th of April at 11, between 11 and 12 a.m. Central European time. And the title of this webinar will be the introduction to ACER, and the speaker of this webinar will be Pippo Ranchi, the chairman of the Board of Appeal of ACER and the principal advisor of Florence Core of Regulation. So if you would like to register for this event, don't hesitate. Just go to our website. This is the website 
uh, that you can see right now on your screen. And uh, in uh, on the main page, there will be a registration link right now. So if you would like to uh, register straight away, you can do that directly from our website. And uh, however, if you would like to get to know also other news regarding the webinars, just please go to the training section of the website, and then one of the categories is webinars. And also out there, there will be a presentation of Jean-Michel updated, uploaded, and uh, in just a couple of minutes, right after we close the, the webinar. So if you would like to download this presentation and keep the slides for you, you can do it uh, directly from our website. However, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions or comments regarding our webinars, don't hesitate to contact me. I will be very happy to answer for any of your questions and also for to get to know any of your comments. So please use the email that you can see right now on your computer screen. Well, it's almost uh, midday, and I would like to thank you very much for joining us today. I hope that you will join us again in our future webinars next month, or maybe in May, or maybe in June, because the webinars will be organized every month. And uh, I would like to wish you a wonderful day for now. And uh, well, the next um, the next webinar will be in April, but you will also receive a follow up email tomorrow from us uh, with further news regarding the webinars. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, and goodbye.